Well, we thought it was about time to bring a familiar face uh, to us uh, from uh, uh, for, for all the Sharks fans out there. Uh, here's head coach Rob Beveridge. Bevo, good to see you, man. How you going? Yeah, look, to be honest, I'm, I'm getting really, really excited about coming back. You know, it's uh, been a long process and obviously with COVID and what have you, and, you know, I was meant to be here, I think, this week. But obviously with the season being delayed, uh, coming over next week. So, uh, mate, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to, to get back to Southland. Yeah, awesome, man. Uh, actually, to be fair, it, it's hard to actually get the perfect plan right now with the environment. But, you know, I think that decision to push the league back uh, based on giving us as good a chance as we can to be playing in front of our fans for the vast majority, if not all of the season, it's proved to be a pretty good call, I think, just to uh, with the way things are panning out. Yeah, it's, I mean, it is a smart thing to do. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we're actually doing this for our community. You know, so to play to play in a, an empty stadium, would, you know, it's a, it's a lead balloon. You know, so so I understand why it's been put back because you know, we, we've got an incredible fan base and it just wouldn't be the same to play, you know, in an empty stadium. So uh, although, you know, it's, it's, it is delayed, it's, it's, it's all for the better. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And to be fair, there's something quite nice about having uh, Wellington Saints on, uh, you know, opening home game at, uh, in the Shark Tank as well too. It's not, that's not the worst way to start. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a they're, uh, massive rivalry there. And uh, yeah, last year we split it. With them, they kicked our ass up there. We kicked their ass down here. So, yeah. but you know, they, they've got they've got some some change there. And uh, actually, ironically, my best mate, uh, Guy Malloy, is coaching Wellington. So, uh, you yeah, know, he's coach of the Tall Ferns, and you know, we we uh, he was my best man at wedding, and I was his best man at his wedding. So, his first game in New Zealand is against me, and vice versa. So, it's, it's going great. to be awesome. Yeah, yeah I, want to, I want to kick his ass if I can. <laughs> Atta boy, like the sound of that. Hey, so uh, tell us about the off season for you. I guess it's been headlined, of course, by your by your boomers' uh, experience, mate, and, and uh, it was a pretty successful mission, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, that, that was that was incredible. Uh, it, it's it's really interesting going through the whole COVID process for a period of time where uh, you know we couldn't work. We I was you know, basically unemployed for the best part of six months because all the stadiums were closed. It, it was very very tough. And now that we're out of it, I've never been busier in my life. You know, I've pretty much been working like four jobs, yeah. you know, um, things like that. But I, I guess one of the highlights, you know, that, that uh, you know, during the, the off season is that, you know, I was appointed as head coach for our national program. And I think it's always a, a dream for, for anybody to represent their country, which I've done uh, as, as assistant coach, I was a head coach for our national junior program, but to be appointed head coach of the actual national senior team to go to a World Cup qualifier, uh, it, it was a, definitely a bucket list thing. Like I never ever thought it would happen. And uh, in basketball Australia, Brian Gordon reached out and said, "Hey, you know, I can't do it. I want you to do it." That that was um, that that was an absolute great honour. Particularly coming from you know, Brian Gordon, who's one of our all time. You know, he's known as the goat. And uh, you know, for him to be able to put faith in me and also our our country for me to take a, a team up to Japan and and uh, play in a World Cup qualifier, it was really really special. And of course, as I say, we're a success, you know, from a yeah. from a result point of view, because you know, you you uh, obviously without NBL players, naturally without NBA players uh, as well too, it was a different looking squad that you sort of had to pull together pretty quick, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it was it was it was tough uh, because obviously all the NBA guys, we got eight of them that normally play in the team while they're back in the USA, and then because of COVID, uh, with the amount of games that were postponed in the NBL, uh, an agreement was made with the NBL to say, okay, we won't take the NBL players, and now I'm going, what do I now do? Yeah. Like shit. So we identified. You know some of the, the best young talent. So we, we decided, all right, let's let's you know basically headhunt players that have been part of our national program. So there was a few in the under nineteen world championship team. Uh, some super talented young athletes coming through. Uh, but because I only had them for literally two sessions, it was important that I, I had to try and recruit. When I say recruit, but have players that have played for me in the past. So obviously top of this was obviously Nick Kay, you know, being in Japan, uh, I've coached Angus Brandt, where he's fake. So they're in Japan. So that 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 made it easy. And then, you know, we sort of looked at other people that what we call is on our depth chart. You know, we've got lists, you know, they're not A, B, C, D or anything like that, but you know, we've got, okay, these are our NBA players, these are our 
uh, you know, our, our next level, here's our next level. We, they're part of the pathway. So everybody that we selected you know, have been identified in the past and played for Australia and, and uh, for, for us. But probably one of the best things was they were just a tremendous group of people. You know, and that's that's something that's really important to me. Uh, you know, we go in. I did a lot of the the stuff um, online. You know, we had zooms with the players. Some are in Europe, some are in Japan. You know, some are in the USA. So we we had to bring them all in, and we did a lot of Zoom meetings, and we had to keep it as simple as we can. But the most important thing was that we had to play hard and play together, and and the players bought in like that. And so we had two sessions. Uh, for our first game and you know when you look back at it i mean we, we were pretty clinical and uh just the way the players bought into to uh a very simple system and just just playing together it's outstanding mate hey uh so uh if we switch to the to the sharkies obviously and, and have a bit of a yarn about what we've got it's we've got a busy couple of weeks from a player announcement point of view because there's uh obviously all of our uh local players and and uh, the opportunity uh, that's uh, there to to be able to bring import players and uh, now that uh that that's a bit clearer as well too so we can expect uh, plenty of announcements to uh to come over the next couple of weeks but i guess we've got that kiwi core uh some nice yep. Uh, consistency year to year, and, and obviously a couple of uh, you know new parts in the form of uh, Drew and, and Jalen that you get to bring in and, and play with this year as well too. Yeah, it's um, I've always found that if if you can keep the nucleus of the team together for a period of time, that's when you have most success. And 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 like last year, you know, it was a successful year. Okay, we didn't win, but for the adversity that we went through as a group with uh, you know new coach, new system, new players. Uh, I felt we were pretty good last year, you know, and you know to lose Zoe with a broken hand, you know, leading into a playoff, well, that didn't help. And then obviously, yeah, uh, with, with Pledge, you know, not not having Pledge for the season as well, and we came really, really close in the in the playoffs. So it was important for me to I want to keep the core group together. You know, the, like the players we have are just tremendous people. They work hard, and we've got the majority back. You know, obviously you're always going to lose players and stuff like that. But, you know, now we've brought in, we've only got pretty much two new players, you know, coming in. It's simple as that. So we've got, you know, majority of the group coming back. They understand, you know, who I am, what I'm about, how we're going to play, things like that. So I think we're going to be better than what we were last year. Awesome, mate. I'm really looking forward to that. Right, Ope. Well, you you stay safe until you get over here, can you? You know, stay healthy, stay yeah. safe. Get over, get, get get over here, and let's uh, let's yep. get ourselves uh, ready for what should be a fun one, mate. Uh, great to catch up. Yep. No, it's absolutely awesome. And, and hello to everybody back there. Um, I'll be there in just yeah, a week, just over a week's time now. Next weekend, so very very excited to get back and see everybody back in uh, Southland.